Hi guys, today I'm doing uh, like a coppery red color. Uh, should I restart this intro? <laughs> I think I should. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't do it when you. So today I am going red. I'm doing like a coppery red. It's gonna have actual red tones in it with some copper highlights. And guess what? I only have to do one step for this look, going from brown to red. Most of you guys might already know about this product because you might have already seen some videos on this, but this is like the most popular going red from a dark hair color dye that people use. So I'm gonna be using the L'Oreal High Color Excellence, you know. Uh, I just got a lot to the name. I got two sizzling copper and one red fire. So the sizzling copper is gonna make it more orangey and the sizzling fire is gonna be more like a flaming Hot Cheeto color. I probably should have gotten the Aurier brand developer because that's what it recommends to get. However, I wasn't thinking right and I got salon care. I don't think it really matters. Uh, some people say it does, some people say it doesn't. Either way, I got 30 volume and I've used this brand before several times, don't mind my boo-boo, but this will be enough to lighten my hair and deposit the dye. It actually says to use 30 volume, so that's perfect. I honestly winged it from what I remember doing years ago. But since I won't be bleaching my hair and then dyeing it red, this is the least damaging way I could do this. My hair is uh, long overdue for coloring, according to Jeremy. He's used to having a different wife every two months. Um, so he's gonna have red hair Jen by the end of the night. That doesn't sound right. I always put the prices in the description, but I ended up spending $28.86 and that's with tax. My hair hasn't been washed in a few days. It does have some dry shampoo in it, which I don't recall that being an issue with previous colorings that I've done. So I think we'll be okay. We'll see what happens because they always say, don't dye clean hair, don't bleach clean hair, or lighten. In our case, we'll be lightening because we're using 30 volume. Because if your hair is really clean, it dries out a lot faster because it doesn't have your natural oils in it to protect it from getting damaged. Uh, so I was like, eh, there's stuff in my hair, but it'll be okay, I think. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go put on my hair dyeing shirt and I'm gonna get my gloves and my bowl and we will get started. <sighs> okay, I'm back. The other things I'm gonna be using in this video are these gloves, which are also from Sally. I believe they were $2 and something cents. <laughs> like I said, all the prices will be in the description below. I also have this brush right here. I don't remember how much this was. Whoopsies. These are things that I've already had, so sorry. I have this processing cap that I will put on after I put the hair dye all over my hair. And then I have this, which is really gonna come in handy. If you've seen my videos before, you already know, but it's this blue bowl that has the fluid ounces listed on the side so that it'll be very easy to measure out the developer that we're gonna be using. First things first, these need to come out and so does this. Mm. As you guys can see, my hair is a lot longer than what I previously worked with and that's why I got three boxes just to be safe. I'm gonna go ahead and brush it out. From here to here is natural color from my scalp. And then here is like brown dye that I used to try to match my natural color. Uh, and then what I did what to fade it was I took color fix and I brought it up slowly kind of like an ombre so I have this very light ombre going on uh, so when I use this dye it's probably going to be deeper up here and then a little bit brighter at the bottom which is totally cool with me all right so that's the length of my hair it comes down to here so I'm gonna be mixing all of this into a glass bowl. I already have my black towel ready because I know after I take a shower, if I were to use the usual white towel that I have, it would get dye all over it. So try to be mindful of that. I have a white curtain, so I'm gonna to have to be careful there. Every time you take a shower with red hair, it will bleed out some dye. So 
Just keep that in mind. You might want to switch a pillowcase too because if you lay down with wet hair, so like if it's just damp, it will get on the pillowcase. Look out for your surroundings and your clothes. If it rains when you have red hair, it will probably end up bleeding onto your clothes. So as much as that sucks, try to either stay out of the rain or just wear something dark for the day that you know that it's gonna rain. We will actually get started now. Sorry about the really long intro. I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on. Nice and grippy and also reusable, so I love them. I'm gonna go ahead and take all these tubes and squeeze them into my bowl. Like I said, I'm using two sizzling coppers and one red fire. The cap has the little popper on it, so keep that in mind. And here we go. I have a feeling I'm gonna have way too much dye in this bowl. I'm happier with that than if I didn't have enough. All right, so now that I have squeezed the contents of all three tubes into this bowl, each box also came with these little copper intensifier tubes. So I have three of these. I'm gonna go ahead and add all three of these into the bowl as well. They're so red, which is why you don't wanna do this over your bath mat. Not a good idea. Okay, so I have the dye and the intensifier in the bowl. I just have to now add the 30 volume developer. So this is where this bowl is gonna come in and it said that I have to do 2.5 fluid ounces for every tube of dye that I put in here. So that times three is gonna be seven and a half fluid ounces. Yeah, of course this doesn't go to seven and a half, but I can kind of predict where that would be. That is about seven and a half fluid ounces. Almost filled up all the way to that rim. So now I'm gonna mix the developer into the bowl with everything else. You don't really need a whisk for this because all of it was either cream or liquid based. But if you were gonna use like bleach powder or something like that, a whisk would definitely be helpful. I'm gonna mix this all together. All right, so this is the starting texture and color of my dye. It's very orange. <laughs> Everyone hates me for this, but I don't section my hair. <laughs> I don't know why I'm this way, but I am. I'm not worried about running out of it. But since I have so much dye, I'm gonna be able to just slather my whole head with it. I'm just gonna act as quickly as I can, and when I'm done, I will separate each piece, make sure I didn't miss anything. Why do I do it this way? Because I'm lazy. Usually what happens with me is I end up separating it and then putting dye on it and saying, screw it, I'm just gonna and put it all on. Like I've said in past videos, which someone brought this to my attention, my side cut takes a while to process because there's no other hair keeping it warm against my scalp. I'm gonna do that first. Oh, I do have a bruise on my head. This bruise right here. I was eating dinner the other night and I dropped a piece of filling for my lettuce wraps and I went to go pick it up and I hit my head really hard on the dining table. So that's what that's from. I was wondering when that bruise would finally show up. Okay, so now that that's covered, I'm going to move on to these areas because they're darker than the rest of my hair. My roots go to about here, and the hair here has been previously bleached. Okay, here we go. And to be honest, I don't know how much of this I'm going to do in front of the camera, only because it's really hard to see with this ring light on. I'm probably going to just do my thing and then show you guys when it's covered. So I'm just gonna get down and dirty and dye all of my hair and I'll see you after. Okay, so I got Jeremy to check in all of the back spots that I can't really see. <laughs> and apparently it looks like one hot buffalo wing. So I think uh, we're good to marinate. My lunch lady cap. And I'm going to let this sit for 25 minutes. I was gonna say 30, but I think that might be pushing it, so 
I'll do 25. What a difference. Basically what I was doing was I would cover it all with dye and then I would slap some over here so that I could really section on one little part and then I would bring another part down and section it so I still technically sec sectioned it after applying a majority of the dye to hair because it's easier to do when your hair is all wet so you can easily just slap it over one side to the other. Another thing I wanted to say, a lot of people when they can't find the products at their Sally Beauty store they end up getting different stuff so I just wanted to make sure that you guys know if you're looking for the coppery red look make sure you get something that has either the word copper in it or fire with the L'Oreal Excellent stuff because the other reds, like the Intense Red, the Red, and uh, there's a couple more reds on the line. So those reds are more of a pink tone base. So when your hair fades, it looks less like a natural red and more like a pink red. So if you're looking for it to fade to a natural redhead look, then you're gonna want to grab the copper stuff. I'm gonna let this sit for 25 minutes and then I'm going to wash it out and only use conditioner. The conditioner that I like using, I don't have anything right now specifically for red or color last anything. I just have my regular Ren Pure Thickening and Strengthening Shampoo and Conditioner, which I don't wash my hair very often, so I don't think it'll hurt much. Uh, just keep in mind that when you use warm water, it does make the color bleed a little bit more. So you want to use cooler water to prevent as much color loss as possible and not keep the shampoo on for a very long time because the shampoo is usually what strips the color out of your hair and makes it fade so fast. So when I use shampoo, I just do a quick lather and wash it right out. But this time, just conditioner. Probably gonna wait to film the next clip for tomorrow. That way you can see it in the sunlight. This is probably my favorite red that I've ever done because it is very vibrant and shiny and gorgeous. And oh, shut up. It's a very dark day, so sorry you can't get as much of a good look as I would want you to. I have a stray here. But here it is after washing it one more time. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. The lighting has not been amazing the past couple days, but overall I really like it. It's definitely faded a little bit more to a more natural red, which I really like. Up at the top where the dark brown was is still very red and I like it a lot. Nowadays, I'm definitely liking more of a natural look, so I appreciate this here. Because at first, I was like, I don't know if I want to go through all that again. It's a lot of maintenance and whatnot. Who knows? We'll see. But as of right now, I really like it. And uh, the health of my hair wasn't compromised. It did look a little bit dry from my shot two days ago where I showed you guys the first result that I had. But honestly, my hair feels back to normal now. And... I dig it. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. Who knows what I'll do next. I don't, I don't know, honestly. And thank you guys for watching and see you next time.